going to make the hardball if any evidence were necessary. Tonight's competing GOP responses, competing GOP responses, prove just how split the Republican Party has begun and become. First Senator Marco Rubio, who was elected in 2010 as a Tea Party favorite, gave his response. It started with a familiar refrain: "Government's the problem." More government isn't going to help you get ahead. It's going to hold you back. More government isn't going to create more opportunities. It's going to limit them. But then in direct contradiction, I think he highlighted the ways government programs have helped him and his family. I believe in federal financial aid. I couldn't have gone to college without it. One of these programs is Medicare. It's especially important to me. It provided my father the care he needed to battle cancer and ultimately to die with dignity. And it pays for the care my mother receives right now. But that wasn't the last word for Republicans tonight. Rubio isn't enough of a Tea Party, I guess, for the Tea Party anymore. So next up tonight, Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky, who hit the familiar Tea Party notes. We're the party that adheres to the Constitution. And so we won't let the liberals tread on the Second Amendment. We will fight to defend the entire Bill of Rights from the right to trial by jury to the right to be free from unlawful searches. We will stand up against excessive government power wherever we see it. We cannot and will not allow any president to act as if he were a king. Well, David Corns, Washington Bureau Chief for Mother Jones Magazine and an MSNBC contributor, and Jenny Beth Martin is co-founder and CEO of Tea Party Patriots. Jenny, thanks for joining us tonight. Why do you think there needed to be two speeches from the right tonight? Uh, wasn't the Republican uh, response adequate? Well, thanks for having me, Chris. And both the Republicans and Democrats have spent us almost $17 trillion into debt. And I think that the, the Tea Party Express decided to have this response so there would be somebody specifically advocating Tea Party values. Why do you think George W., who uh, ran as a sort of a common sense Republican, I actually voted for the guy thinking he was going to be common sense, why did he become a guy that signed every spending bill, didn't veto a single bill? I'm not even getting into the Iraq war, which I thought was extraordinarily unnecessary. But why did he spend every dollar he got his hands on if he's a Republican? You know, that's a good question. I don't know the answer as to why he did it. I know that that spending and the spending that's continued since then are causing major problems for our economy. We're seeing a contraction in the GDP again, and Americans are concerned about the economy, about getting back to work, yeah. and about the deficit. And who's paying for the prescription drugs bill? I've always wondered who was going to pay for that. I always thought that was just put on the books, right? Well, I think that we're all paying for the prescription drug bill right now. And frankly, it's a debt that we're racking up and we're sending that debt on to future generations. We're, we're kicking the can down the road instead of taking responsibility for what we've, we've promised ourselves. Yeah, you should talk to my daughter about that. It's one of her big concerns. Let's go to David here. From the progressive side of things, when you look at the speeches tonight, the president gave, I thought, a pretty good speech. It, if anything, it had too many things that it was hard for me to, until the very end to know where his passion lay. I clearly Clearly on guns, clearly on voting rights, yeah, but there was so much stuff in there in terms of infrastructure and immigration, and I, I, I just thought, didn't know, I didn't feel the, uh, the pulse really. Well, I thought overall it was a very powerful, powerful progressive agenda yeah. that he was laying out for his second term. He wasn't trying to cut deals with the Republicans or even reach out and forge compromises that they have long ago said they're not interested in. He was trying to lead, and he was saying, listen, there's something more, there are priorities here other than just the debt. we got to educate our I kids. I agree with that. But look, about about a couple points. He didn't, he didn't do any, on guns, he said, just give me a vote. You on infrastructure, vote. there was he no money could, behind it. You could even vote no. But he, you know, he talked about, you know, hey, hey, Chris, you've been talking about bridges for the last two years now. Yeah, but where's the money? About, about 70,000. Show me the uh, money, bridges. Cuba Gooding. Well, okay, Where's well, the listen, money? You can't, listen, you can't have you know, Jenny on here and just talk about debt, 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 and but say, okay, we can't She's allowed to talk about, about that. Actually, I want to know actually, what we're doing actually, in investment. Actually, Jen, you lost the last election on this point. The American people are not debt fixated like Rand Paul and others. They mm -hmm. want to see, in, they want to see investments Pulling, and innovation okay. and education. That's what the this whole election issues was in America about. Right now. Jenny, go ahead, your thoughts. The polling from the Pew Foundation from January shows that the economy, the debt, and the deficit are the top issues for Americans right now. The Americans economy. are concerned about it. Yes, yeah, the economy. They're concerned about the economy and jobs, not just about the debt. They're not concerned, the, you know, 
You know, but they, 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 don't, they don't favor the Rand Paul type of tax and Medicare or the Paul Ryan type of tax and Medicare. They favor keeping Pell Grants going. One of the most ludicrous things that happened tonight was Rubio said that he went to school on federal finance uh, uh, loans, and then he said, what should we do for the kids today? Give them more information about the about, about what might happen with debt to them if they take out loans. That doesn't help kids. It was absolutely absurd. Okay, let Jenny talk. All right, all that we are saying in Tea Party Patriots is asking government to cut one penny out of every dollar it spends. If they would actually do that and make real spending cuts, we could be at a balanced budget in six years. It's not, it's not drastic. It's not going to harm any of us to do that. And we're not talking about that much money. It wouldn't take long to get our budget balanced and we could start paying down the debt. Okay, well, midway through the Republican response, say Marco Rubio made an unexpected move. It has nothing to do with ideas, only showmanship, and I think it's going to hurt him. Let's watch. In the short time that I've been here in Washington, nothing has frustrated me more than false choices like the one the president laid out tonight. Uh, what, what do we make of that, uh, David? Well, you know, I, I think, again, he started off by saying that the president is wrong because he believes the economy tanked because there weren't high enough taxes and big enough government. That's not what the president believes. That's not what happened. And, you know, the Republican side and the Tea Party crowd, I'd be happy to hear what Jenny has to say about this, have never come to terms with what happened in 2007, 2008, the corporate abuses that led to Wall Street bringing down Main mm -hmm. Street. And Rand Paul talks about Adam Smith. Adam Smith talked very extensively about the role government has in regulating the economy so the free hand can work effectively and not screw Main Street. And so, yeah, I, I mean, the Tea Party, the Republican Party, they have nothing to say about how we got into the mess we got in. Okay, think, you know nothing I about the drink. Obviously, I was ha trying to have some fun with David, but he's in high speed tonight. <laughs> the, 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 the drink thing is night, so Chris. stupid. Let, let me ask you about this, Jenny. I want to take it tough with you here. Right now, the federal government taxes about 15% of our economy and spends about 25%. All you hear from the Tea Party is cut the spending. How are you going to bring together that spending and that taxation level inequality? Bring it into balance around 20 unless you raise taxes. We just saw taxes No, no, increase. it's only 15% of the GDP is being taxed. We do not tax anywhere near the cost of even the government you would support. Can't you, know you at what? least in the Tea you Party what, pay Chris, for what you want? I think there is, there is agreement here. When we have unemployment that goes up in the month of January, we have a GDP that contracted in the fourth quarter of last, last right. year, and on the day that those numbers are coming out, Wall Street goes up. Clearly, the people in Wall Street are benefiting as the rest of us around the country I'm going to ask you a question. Why don't you in the Tea Party want to pay for the government you, you want? Like you said, cut a penny or whatever out of the government. That's going to leave government spending way above 20 percent. Why can't we at least raise 20 percent of the economy in revenue so we get close to balancing the budget? You guys only want to cut spending, but you don't really want to cut it enough to get down to 15 percent of the economy, do you? I want to cut it so that we have a balanced budget. Well, that means I don't cutting want to the put government this down burden to 15%. on our children. That. And that's what we're doing. We're putting okay. the burden on our children, and we can't afford to do that. Well, well, and that's well, why well, we started. Okay, that's the here's problem another, here. Chris, here's, the, here's another question, though. If you're saying Wall Street's doing so well, then why do all the Tea Party uh, members oppose Barack Obama when he says that okay. he wants the wealthy to pay a little bit more. If okay. they're doing so well, that's one way to bring down the deficit and not burden the middle class deals. grandkids that you okay, care about. So just I want to get rid of the crony deals. The establishment on both sides makes deals that benefit themselves. They they do okay. what they can to take care of each other, and they're not taking care but of America. And they're not taking care of the hardworking American people. Stop, stop, David. She's on the show. She has a right to speak. Sure. And I really appreciate Jenny coming on tonight. I do think you've got an inconsistency, Jenny, in the way you look at the government. You've got to pay for what you believe we need to spend. And if you just take the basics, like paying the interest and paying Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid and paying uh, the defense, that costs a lot of money. And I don't think the Tea Party is willing to pay for what it wants out of government. It would love to, everybody like to cut spending, but the fact is you're not willing to equalize spending with revenues, which is what I think you believe in. That's my thought. Okay, but thank you for coming on. Come back, we'll debate it again. Jenny Beth, uh, thanks so much, thank you Chris. Much, Jenny Beth Martin for coming on from the Tea Party, and we want to.